also commonly referred to as an indirect fired heater, is a piece of equipment that is commonly found at or near the wellhead or gas transmission line and of which the main purpose is to heat up the well stream or pipeline fluid. As the pressure is being cut from a high pressure down to a lower pressure, the Joules-Thompson effect associated with the pressure reduction causes extreme reductions in the fluid temperature and can form hydrates that will quickly freeze up in the line, thus blocking flow and shutting in the line until it thaws. Even though hydrates look very similar to ice, they can form at temperatures well above the freezing point of water. In order to prevent this situation, a line heater is employed to add energy in the form of heat to the well stream in an amount sufficient to raise the temperature to a point that is above the hydrate formation temperature. The heater shell is the large horizontal cylinder that is filled with liquid and contains the fire tube and heater coil. The fire tube is a long pipe that runs along the bottom of the heater shell from one end of the shell to the far end and then returns. The coil is found in the upper half of the heater shell and has several passes up and down the length of the heater shell. The fuel train is essentially a system of pipe, valves, and instruments which take the gas from a high pressure source and reduces it down to just a few inches of water column at the point of injection into the fire tube where it is burned. Heat is generated from burning natural gas, often pulled off the well stream after the pressure reduction has occurred. Once this gas is released into the inlet of the fire tube where it is combined with the air, it is burned in a fashion similar to that of a natural gas fired water heater in the home. The hot combustion gases travel down the length of the fire tube and then vent to the atmosphere through a vertical stack which is well above ground level. The fire tube is submerged in a water bath where the heat is transferred to the surrounding liquid. Even though it's called a water bath, it is typically not plain water. It is usually a mixture of water and antifreeze compounds such as ethylene glycol or occasionally another media such as oil and is used to increase the boiling point of the fluid so that a greater rate of heat transfer can be achieved within a given heat transfer area. This hot liquid, or heating media, surrounds not only the fire tube, but also the heater coil, which is found in the upper portion of the heater shell. As the well stream fluid flows through the submerged heater coil, it absorbs heat from the heating media as it flows through several passes up and down the length of the heater shell before finally exiting the shell. Note that it is very important that the coil stay completely submerged in the liquid for heat transfer to occur. It is common for heater coils to have a choke valve built into the heater coil assembly, sometimes found on the inlet, sometimes on the outlet, and in many cases they may be found in the middle where there is an upstream and a downstream section of the coil, each operating at a different pressure. The placement of the chokes is all about keeping the well stream above hydrate formation temperature while keeping it cool enough to provide efficient heat transfer. Since a line heater is a relatively simple piece of equipment, there's little in the way of controls. The only primary control requirement is to control the temperature of the water bath to maintain the heating media temperature. The temperature controller is a simple device that passes instrument gas to a fail-closed temperature control valve. When the temperature is above the set point, the temperature controller closes off the gas supply to the temperature control valve and vents the signal line supplying the temperature control valve, thus causing the valve to close and stopping the fuel supply to the burner. When the temperature falls below the set point, the temperature controller supplies instrument gas to the temperature control valve, which then opens and sends fuel into the burner where the pilot flame reignites the gas and combustion starts again. The heater shell must always be able to breathe as the heating media heats and cools. This is often in the form of a pressure slash vacuum relief device which allows the unit to vent and ensures the tank will not become over or under pressurized. There should always be a flame arrestor on the inlet to the fire tube and its purpose is to keep the fire tube from flashing back onto the operator as he starts the unit up or is operating in close proximity to the fire tube end. The fuel train must have adequate pressure relief and it's a best practice to include a fuel gas scrubber, often called a drip pot, to ensure that no condensate created from the cooling effect of pressure reduction makes it to the fire tube where it could cause unstable burning, backfiring, or could even possibly catch the unit on fire. A line heater in its most basic form is a very simple piece of equipment. However, improper use or operation can lead to various failures. One failure is when the temperature control valve hangs open and causes the unit to add full heat and subsequently boils off the heating media, ultimately catching fire when the media boils down to the point that the fire tube is no longer submerged. 
There are other failures that may occur, such as failed pressure control regulators on the fuel train and the like, and that might cause the unit to go offline, but these failures rarely cause any sort of catastrophic or long-term issue. We have designed hundreds of line heaters over the years, and we have the experience to design them to fit your needs. Additionally, we can provide the support to see whether your existing line heater will perform adequately when flow conditions have changed or when it needs to be relocated to a new home. So whether you just need a little help with performance estimation, require a detailed line heater package design, or need 3D models, GAs, and PNIDs of an entire wellhead site, Image can provide the manpower, technology, and the expertise to ensure success. Thank you for watching. Come visit us on the web at image-ces.com, email us at info at image-ces.com, or give us a call at 281-829-4101.